All right, engineers, we're gonna take a look at the scapula here. So if we look at the scapula, um, this part up here, this portion up here is going to be the superior part of it, and this is the inferior part of the scapula. So if I look here, if I kind of scrape right around this part here, kind of like I'm making a U, this is called the inferior angle of the scapula. Then if I take and I scrape this side right here against this edge, this is gonna be referred to as the medial. Okay, this is actually gonna be the medial border of the scapula, and then this one over here will be the lateral border of the scapula. Then if I scrape this surface, I'm scraping this, this all this surface that I'm scraping is called the infraspinous fossa. That's where the infraspinatus muscle originates. Then if I come up here like this, you guys can see here that this part right here, this is actually referred to as the scapular spine. So that's our scapular spine right there. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn this a little bit here so we can get a better angle on it. And this right here that I'm kind of scraping, that is the acromion process right there. So that's the acromion process. I'm gonna turn a little bit more again so we can get a better view here. This right there is the glenoid cavity. It's the glenoid cavity. Turn a little bit more there. There's going to be the coracoid process. The coracoid process is basically where the biceps muscle attaches to the acromion process is what joins with the uh, acromion into the clavicle to form the acromioclavicular joint. And then the head of the humerus fits in here into the glenoid cavity to form the synovial bone socket joint. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of flip over here and come back here. And now we're gonna kind of look at the anterior portion. So what we looked at was the posterior portion of the scapula before, and now we're gonna look at the anterior portion. So this is the anterior portion of the scapula. And then if I, ha if I scrape this surface right here, this, is, this surface that I'm scraping is actually called the subscapular fossa. So this is where the subscapularis muscle originates, okay? And again, this is the coracoid process. If I kind of turn a little bit here, you guys might be able to see that this little divot right there that I'm pushing through, that's called the suprascapular notch. That's where the suprascapular nerve runs through, okay? And then this is actually referred to as the superior border of the scapula, okay? That's the superior border. And then technically, I could say that this angle right here is actually considered to be the superior angle. And then, as we said down here, this is the inferior angle. And then technically, it's hard to see the lateral angle, but it's technically moving like I'm coming from the top here right underneath the coracoid process, and I'm moving this way because it takes two points to make an angle, so that's gonna be the lateral angle. Now what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna kinda of bring this up one more area here, and I wanna show you this part right here. This is actually called the supraspinous fossa. Supraspinous fossa, and, this, and again, this is where the supraspinatus muscle um, originates, and the one muscles that I mentioned are part of the rotator cuff. There is another one that we didn't talk about, but that's okay, and it actually attaches down here, the teres minor. Um, but that basically covers the scapula.